Hey everyone, how's it going? So what am I working on now? Well, I got this Chevy Silverado got towed into me and the customer's complaint is lost the brakes. And the funny thing is the brake light's not on on the dashboard. Let me just see something. It works when you hit the parking brake. Usually when the brake pedal, when they, somebody loses the brakes, the brake light comes on because of loss of fluid. So I'm not quite sure what's going on yet. All I did was start this thing. Um, I'm not sure the year. It appears to be like a 2009, 10, 11-ish. So I'll figure that out once I get inside and see what's going on with it. Now, let's just see. So down there, you can actually see the pedal. It goes, well, it's not on the floor, but it's pretty darn close. Like it lost all the rear brakes. That's almost what it's like. So I'll be willing to bet it has some brakes, let's see. drive now. Oh, let's try moving forward. And I'm in the parking lot. I'm going to back this on the lift. Yeah, it has it has brakes, but it probably has front brakes. I notice it's also in four-wheel low. They must have done that just to try to make it so they weren't going too fast. I've seen people do that before. I've done that before when I've had to. So let's get this thing inside. Let's check the brake fluid and let's go from there and find out what we're dealing with. All right, so this truck is a 2011. I just got it in a shop. I got to get it set up on a lift. I didn't do any of that yet. But let's open up the hood. Let's check the fluid level, and let's see where we're at. And you can never go by the witness mark here because it could just be a... Oh, no. Look. You see it moving? It is actually full of fluid. So why don't we have any brakes? Well... Normally in a situation like that, it's a master cylinder. So I think what I'm gonna to have to do is start with a master cylinder. I don't think I wanna start anywhere else. I wanna do that and at least this way I know where we're starting from because with the pedal, I mean the pedal is just mush. It's like it's air, but supposedly the guy didn't do anything to the brakes. Let me put it up in the air. Let me just double check the brakes, but then I'm pretty confident I'm just gonna start with a master cylinder. See, I started to jump to a conclusion there. And anytime I do that, it bites me. So I never jump to conclusions. I don't know if any of you have seen that movie Office Space, I think it is. The guy has to jump to conclusions, Matt. Yeah, that's kind of what I was doing, jumping to conclusions. I still think it's going to be a master cylinder. But let's find out. Let's, uh, let's get this thing up in the air. Let's do a visual inspection of all the brakes, and let's go from there. Now, one thing I want to do, I didn't think of. See, I'm actually, I have another one of these, believe it or not, uh, that blew out a rear caliper. And I started to make a video on that, but the customer hasn't decided if they want us to fix it or not. So I'm sorry about this chime for right now, but I want you to listen to something. Actually, let me put it in park and I'll take the key out. Hang on. All right, that's better. Anyway, uh, customer, I'm waiting on that one for the customer to give us the okay. So I basically put that thing all back together, put it outside. And basically, I'm just showing you what went wrong. And then I'm going to show you about changing calipers and stuff like that. So that video is in the works, but it's not here yet. It's just weird. I got two of these things in a row, uh, both you know gmc or chevy pickup trucks uh anyway one thing i want to do whenever you have a situation like this with with very little brake pedal or whatever after you check the fluid let's say you had to add fluid to it pump the brake up without it running pump it up and then start looking for leaks because if you're just going to assume and start looking for leaks you're probably not going to find something especially if say the car came into you towed into you or it's a friend's car that you know they brought it to your house or whatever however you're doing it just you're always better off put fluid in it. Yes, you're going to make a mess or whatever, but this one, the fluid's already full. So what I want to do is I want to pump the pedal, but I did this already, and I want you to listen, see if you can hear this. So now I'm reaching down under the dash. Actually, let me switch to these. So I'm pushing this by hand, and it's not running. Outside, I don't know if you can hear this. You hear that? Woo! Hear that? I'm pushing down on the pedal. I'm going to release. That's in the back. So what is that coming from? That's coming from something. I don't know what. It's this is drum brakes in the rear. So we got to look to see what's going on. Did we lose a wheel cylinder? Did our shoes get eaten up? Um, if we lost a wheel cylinder, I think we would lose fluid. So let's put this up in here and let's take a look and see if we can't find out what's going on. So I got the truck up in the air, and if you look, I don't see any wetness there. So I'm not worried about the wheel cylinder possibly leaking out or anything like that. 
but you can tell it's definitely out of adjustment by all the noise. It's, that's the springs going back. What happens is the shoes expand. The shoes come out like this to hit the drum. You know, you got two shoes that come out to hit the drum and then they have to come back. And what you're hearing is you hear the springs coming back. So, but underneath here in the back, everything looks okay. You know, I still got to pull the wheels off to actually physically inspect the shoes. I can pretty much guarantee it's probably going to need shoes and hardware. At that point, it's probably going to need wheel cylinders, but this thing's crusty too. This has to be, this was an up north vehicle at some point. But see, that's fluid. Where did all that fluid come from? Usually, if you've got a blown out line, it'll siphon out the master cylinder. And this thing's not siphoning out the master cylinder, so something's leaking somewhere, and i got to figure that out. And there's the ABS unit, and I don't see anything wrong up there. There's the front brakes. I don't see anything wrong in there. But if you look, those rotors and backing plates, they're pretty well rusted up. This one's far worse than the other side. All right. It's got some oil leaks. But let me let this thing down and recheck from underneath the hood. Or let me look from inside the wheel well area and see if I can't see something in there. I may have to take the wheel well out on this side to try to see what's going on. Although I should be able to see from underneath the hood. I mean, I can't see much from here. But let's let it down again and let's, let's reinvestigate what we got. All right, so I'm up under the hood, and this is what I find here. Take a look carefully. The master and that's all clean, but if you look down, you follow the brake lines on top of the frame there. Can you see it? It's all wet on top there. See that? So if you look that larger line, I got a funny feeling that's leaking. So I'm going to have Mo maybe step on the brakes and see if we can't see something. Right, let me get Mo over here. All right, let's see if we can see something here. Get closer. All right, go ahead, Mo. Push it down. Just keep pumping it. Oh, there it goes. You see it? All right, yep, it's actually rotted through. I'm surprised it's not siphoning the master cylinder out. All right, so that line is rotted. So it looks like I'm going to be replacing a line. Okay, Mo, you can stop. All right, interesting. I would have never thought that. But I got to pull the wheels off anyway and check the rear brakes, and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, so I got the wheel well out, and let me just show you real quick. I got the wheels off too. I'm going to show you the rear brakes. Here, this inside line, that line actually goes to the right front wheel. So that's the one that's leaking. Now, the other ones actually look okay. At first, I was thinking it rotted inside that clip, which I've seen that before. But judging by the fact that I don't see any swelling on the other ones, I think it's okay. Now, the reason I see swelling, too, and the reason these lines are black, that's a coating on there to help them prevent them from doing this, from rotting out. But what do you notice that's really close to that brake line there? What do you, what do you notice there? Catalytic converter. Huh, yeah. So... I'm just kind of surprised they never put a heat shield or anything. They may have had a heat shield at one point in its life. But so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cut that line probably up there somewhere. I may even go as far as going all the way up here. Cut the line up here and cut the line underneath the body here somewhere. Wherever I can access it the easiest. And then I'm just going to splice in a new section of line. Uh, but yeah... So, I mean, this thing, this is a rusty critter. This obviously came from up north. I mean, just look at that. It's just, this, this, is, this is a very rusty critter. This had to be, I don't know if it was a, plow, yeah, it was a plow truck at one point. See the stud hanging down there? Somebody had a, plow, somebody used this as a plow truck. I see a stud on each side. Yeah, it's just, it, this thing is, this is bad, but whatever. It's not, not mine to worry about. I did unhook this from there just to get it out of the way so I had more access. So now when you come to the back, like I said, <clears throat> there's your wheel cylinder. Your wheel cylinder pushes out on the brake shoes. The brake shoes come out and contact the inside of the drum. So the noise you were hearing were the springs pulling everything back together, meaning that the shoes had to come out excessively like they were way out of adjustment. Now, this side is not leaking. However, I can't get the bleeder open. 
on this side, this one is leaking. So we're going to be putting a pair of wheel cylinders on this. Uh, also, I'm going to be doing front pads and rotors on this, provided the customer wants to do the job, which I don't see why they wouldn't. They need to have a truck, right? So let's get going. Let's uh, get some pricing on parts. Let the customer know what we're going to need to do to get their truck back on the road. And uh, then we're going to give them a shout. So hopefully we can continue this video. All right, so we got the approval. Now, I am going to be putting a master cylinder on this. I'm confident there's a problem with the master cylinder. And the reason for that is because the pedal is, like, mushed. There's nothing there in the very beginning. And then all of a sudden, like, at the floor is where you have something. With just a leaking line like this, you should be able to get some kind of a resistance in the pedal in the beginning and then push the fluid out. As you saw, it just wept out. It didn't come out with any kind of force. That should have a force behind it so and i've seen it many times when you blow out a brake line or a wheel cylinder or a caliper anything like that i've seen it happen plenty of times where after that you got to put a master cylinder on it because i the only thing i can think of is the, the seals in there that create the pressure they go past their normal stroke inside the bore and there's probably debris or something like that and just over time and they get damaged in the process so that's why this thing's not building up any pressure so we are going to be putting a master cylinder on this as well like I said, I'm 100% confident that, that it's no good. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut into this line. I'm going to cut the line somewhere over here. I'm going to take the line out of this bracket first up here too. And I'm going to lift it up and then I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to section in a new piece. I want, to, I want you to see something. If you look close, see if I can get in here. Look at the rot on the block. That's just like, that's like train wreck rot. Look at that. That's like this thing was underwater or something. That's just horrible. But yeah, so anyway. And then as you can see, see the witness mark on the nut there? So somebody's had this exhaust off. So I got a funny feeling there's supposed to be a shield here. I know there's supposed to be a shield on that manifold. There's not one there. But I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a shield down here too, somewhere on that cat covering this up. Because what happened was that that covering that's on that brake line the protective coating or whatever probably just burned away and that's what created the um, line to leak like that because it just started to rot so all right let me get those clips open and then let's start figuring out exactly what we're going to do all right so to get in here I mean, these are just clipped in it's no big deal but to get in here to do this i have the camera in front of me so i can't even see what i'm doing but what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this tool here i'm going to put it on that line and i'm going to twirl it around and cut the line. I'm going to do the same thing up there. The only problem is I really can't film it. I don't have a good vantage point to film this, and I don't have very good equipment to do it. So I'm going to have to do each piece and then show you. But basically, I'm going to move it out. I'm going to cut it over here in this area somewhere. And then i got to clean this coating off, too. you got to get that off of there. Um, yeah, let me do that, and then let's see where we end up. There, the line is off, and you can actually see the pinhole in it. I just cleaned, I put this thing on a wire wheel to clean it down. Oops, hold on, sorry about that. To clean it down just so you could see that. I wanted to see underneath all that rust, but yeah, so it just popped through. So what I did there, you know, I cut the line there, and I found that the easiest spot to probably work with was cutting it all the way up here. So now i got to try to figure out how to get that black stuff off there, that, that protective coating. It's almost like a, it's like a hard plastic almost that's on there. I'm wondering if I could probably scrape this stuff with a razor blade. I've never actually had to do this before on one of these. I did it on something else at one point, and I wound up using one of those scrubby wheels on a die grinder and cleaned it down. But sometimes if you do that, you can actually misshape it. So I don't want to do that. Let me, uh, let me try scraping it with a razor blade. It might come right off like that. Let's try that first and see what happens. All right, so what I did there was I took my little... What we lovingly refer to as a crack torch, and I did this. Basically, with it lit, went on there, and basically melted off that plastic. And once I was done with that, I just grabbed it with a rag. Make sure you were careful so you don't burn yourself. I grabbed it with a rag and just wiped it down, got all the loose stuff off. But now, once it's cool, I'm going to polish it down with like a scotch bright pad or something like that be very careful when you're doing something like that brake fluid is extremely flammable 
I had basically a little torch coming out of there of fluid burning as it was coming out. Never stand in front of it too, because you can actually spit little fireballs of brake fluid at you. Uh, I've seen that happen before. You get you, you get a little second and third degree burn from it. So just uh, be mindful of it. So do that on both both ends, and then I'm going to polish it down with a Scotch Brite. Just get it nice and clean. This way I have a good surface for when I make the double flare and I put the fittings on and everything else. And actually, I want to show you what I was talking about earlier with the torch and how you have little fireballs. I realize I got to burn off more of this stuff further down in order to get there you go see that so but you got to be careful you don't want to burn a darn car up so yes i am being careful here <laughs> now the reason i got to go that far down on it is because i have to get the fitting down so i can actually flare the end i got to do the same over here so let me get this done and let me get them on there and let's flare this all right so there you go the fitting's in place so now i have to flare the ends I don't care about bending this. The lines don't really show any rot anywhere else. So I'm not really concerned about bending them because I can bend them back. So now, when you go to flare them, there's a conventional tool that most at-home guys have. And this is the style. It's an Evertough. I don't even know where in the world I got this from. Could have been a parts store. I don't recall. I think I used this one once. I have a couple of them. This just happens to be the one that I have right at the moment. Now this one, I just bought this not too long ago and I've used it once. And it worked very, very well. And it only fits uh, 3 16 and quarter line. So now this line on this truck is quarter. It's kind of an unconventional setup, but it worked very well. You basically loosen this up, you slide the line in, there's like a, a depth setting and stuff like that. This might be the tool to set the depth, I don't recall. Wow, it's like stuck in there. Yeah, that's what this is for. And then once you're done with that, you got these tools here to set the flare. The nice thing about this is you have a pretty good area to grab with. And um, it's kind of good for like a tighter spot. That's kind of a pain only because you have that big wing, that uh, lever there. You got to have room to swing it around in a big giant circle and everything else. This at least you can use a wrench or a socket or whatever. So let me get this one set up because I'm going to use this one on here. And let's make some flares. And with this kit, they give you this nice little inner deburring tool. And what you're going to want to do is stick it in the hole and just spin it clockwise. And what it does is it deburs the inside of that a little bit. Now, when you're done doing this, see that? A little focus on that. No? There we go. Once you're done deburring, you see how it's got a little bit of junk hanging off of it? What you want to do is get brake clean and a straw with the, with the straw that's on the brake clean. Stick the straw all the way in and hit it with the brake clean so it blows everything out. Do it on that side too. And this way, because you don't want to have the metal in the system, because the metal gets stuck up inside a caliper or a wheel cylinder or whatever, and then you can wind up with bigger problems in the future. So let's get that cleaned out and let's make some flares. So here, you, just so you can see what I'm talking about, just stick the straw in there. And give it a couple of blasts. Don't worry about the brake clean that's in there. It's compatible with the system. It's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. And be honest with you, by the time you start getting everything ready to go together, that stuff is dried up. So let's make flares. I think I've said that three times. Now the way this tool works, if you look, it says three sixteenths there and quarter inch there. So quarter inch, that's the end that the tool is going to actually insert to. So the line has to come through this end. So I'm going to insert the line through this end into there and then this is the depth setting tool. I'll show you how this is going to go in through this end. Once you start, you're going to snug these down. And then you don't want to make them tight because you don't want to clamp the line just yet. You're just going to get it so by hand until it stops. And then you're going to insert this at the end. And what this is going to do, it's going to push the line to the right depth. Then you're going to tighten those and then you can use the rest of the tool. Let me show you. So just insert like that. And you want to look on this end. And lo and behold it's actually not sticking out enough. So I still have to clean a little more of that stuff off the line in order to get the line to protrude further. All right, so as you can see, sorry about that, the line now protrudes. So now that I have it snugged down, sorry, I'm working my little tripod here. Now that I have it snugged down by, with my fingers, never forget to put the line nut on. Can't tell you how many times I've done that in my life. What you do is you screw this in I might have to snug them down just a hair more. I don't know yet. 
Let's see how this screws in. So this should start there. It hit the line. So now it should start pushing the line. See that? So it is pushing the line because this is going to set the depth of the tool. So now the depth of the tool is correct. So now let's, whoop, sorry about that. Let me grab that. Hang on. Of course it fell on the spot if you can't grab it. See all my videos, I don't practice them. You're seeing what's actually going on. You know, I don't, I very rarely, and I'll let you know if I do, I'll very rarely set something up, you know, where I know what the outcome is going to be, you know, stuff like that. You get to see exactly what I'm doing. Sorry about that. Let me back up. You get to see exactly what I'm doing, exactly what I'm experiencing. You know, a lot of times I can't film a lot of intricate little things, so I kind of try to fill you along as I do it. So now the line is crushed in there and tight. So now I'm going to need something to get that off. Oh no, five eighths. All right. So now we get that out. All right, let me get this out. Let me pause this for a second. So now using this tool, now you're gonna create the flare. This end, yeah, there you go. See how it's concave like that? What this does is it allows the end of it to bow out and fold in. And then once that's done, you flip the tool over, and then this end will actually flop it back into onto itself. So this way you actually make the flare. And like I said, the tool may seem a little awkward, but I tell you what, it did a nice, nice flare the last time I used it, which was the first time I used it. So, And the nice thing about this is you have this handle to grab. And hopefully it's not pushing the line out, which it may be. Yes, it is. It's pushing the line out. Son of a pea picker. Ah, I can't believe that. It's pushing the line out. This is a very hard line. Dang it. Okay, well, on to the next tool, and let's see what happens. All right, that might have been operator error. I might not have had a tool tight enough. Let me just see. I repositioned the tool, and I actually tightened it with the gun. A little three-eighths DeWalt gun. This actually feels like it's working now. Yeah, I think that actually worked. Okay. So, there. Just Let's get this out. Let's look inside and see if it did make the first part of the flare. See in there? Yes, it did. See that? All right. So now let's go with the coned part. I'm going to stick that in and we're going to complete the flare. This part usually goes easier. It's the first part that's usually the harder part. These are pretty thick steel lines. So. And then you want the tool to bottom out. Okay, there we go. So now, hopefully, this actually worked. So it could have just been, I think it was just operator error the first time, and I apologize for that. And let's take this off and see what the end result is. And there we go, success. That's a pretty nice flare. Just gotta clean the boogers up on the edge of it. Some of the boogers can be from the coating that may not have come completely off, but yeah, that's exactly what it is. So, but that's a nice flare. So now I'm gonna do the same with the other side and then I gotta make a piece of line. 
But see that? I mean, I make mistakes too. I, you know, I'm not infallible. I'm not perfect. Um, but anyway, just, I figure I'd show you that. You know, I make mistakes. So let's go ahead. Let's flare the other end. I'm not going to bother showing you that. I showed you on this one. Flare the other end, and I'm going to make a piece of line. I'm going to use the copper nickel line. It's just much easier to work with than steel line. Steel line's a pain. I've done that in the past, but anyway. So let's do this, and let's get this done. And here, I figured I'd show you. That's one of the flares on the new copper tubing I'm going to put in there. And you see how nice that flare is. It, can't, it comes out really nice with that tool. So now I'm going to put the fitting on. Always make sure you put the fittings on first. I didn't flare the other end so I could still slide a fitting on there. You know what I mean? So I'm going to slide the fitting on, and I'm going to measure the length, and then I'm going to make another flare. And then we're going to install it up in there. There, that's the finished one on that side. So let's get that done. Oh, and after you're done making a flare, too, do the same thing with the brake clean. Put it inside the hole, spray it out, just to make sure you get out any um, debris that might have fallen in there in the process of making the flare. So here we go. I got the line made up ready to go in place. It's a touch longer than it needs to be. I'd rather have a touch longer than a, than a little bit too short. I put a little bit of tape on the ends too because sometimes when you want to, when you feed something through, you don't want the fitting to go anywhere. And also, this is getting unions. This is the right way to do it. Not compression fittings. Compression fittings are not legal in most states. Most states that have inspections, if you have a um, compression fitting on a brake line, that's an automatic failure. So it's something to consider. They... A compression fitting technically will not hold under the extreme braking pressure that a brake system can produce. Uh, you may be able to get away with it, you know, for just like a daily driver or something like that. And, you know, if you're never going to have to slam on the brakes, but God forbid you got an emergency and you got to jam on the brakes to stop, a compression fitting can blow off. It's not a positive fit, so to speak. It doesn't positively lock in place. Whereas this, with an actual union, does physically lock in place. It's not going to go anywhere. A compression fitting can slide off. So that's the reason they're not legal in most states. So let me get the unions, get them in place. I'm gonna feed this line behind the strut tower there and we're gonna get this in place. So there we go. The union's in place, the line is run. I went back into the connectors. I pulled it as far away from the exhaust as I possibly could and it's routed over. It's away from the steering linkage. It may look like it's close, but it's really not. I can get my whole hand back there and in between everything. It's more up against the strut tower here or spring tower, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but yeah, so that's all together. So now I can hook this back up here and just clip that out of the way. So once I'm done with all of that, I'll put the wheel well back in it. And um, actually, no, I'm going to leave the wheel well out because I always like to check these connectors first. I'm going to spray this down with brake clean, get it all nice and dried up. And this way, when I go to change the master and bleed everything out, I can double check all of that just to make sure that everything's good. I always want to make sure they're not leaking. So with the brake line done, I'm going to get ready to change the pads and rotors and stuff. I pull the top bolt or the two bolts out of the caliper. I mean, come on, whoever did this, this is ridiculous. They just slathered them with anti-seize. Totally unnecessary, completely unnecessary. I don't know why somebody bothered doing it like this. But I mean, it's just, that's overkill, absolute overkill. Stuff like this also attracts dirt. So you gotta remember that. There, there's no reason to go overkill and stuff like this. And you could see it, it's all over the rotor down there too. Like somebody put it on when they changed rotors the last time. Put a little bit on, it's fine. There's no reason to go bananas with it. I'm gonna show you this. I'm in the process of taking the caliper bracket bolt out. And look at the amount of anti-seize on that. These are not supposed to have anti-seize on them at all. They're supposed to have Loctite on them, not anti-seize. So yeah, totally wrong stuff. Now also, if you look at where the pad slides, they're dry as a bone. So they lube these up and there's no reason to, but they didn't lube up the area where the stuff actually slides. So what's the point? I mean, seriously, what is the point? Ugh, people aggravate me. All right, let's keep going. All right, so I pulled the rotor off, and there you can see all the anti-seize that somebody put on there. Okay, I can see putting a little bit of anti-seize on it. You really shouldn't put it on wheel studs, though. You can put some oil or whatever, but, I mean, this is just, this is overkill. I mean, this is just absolute overkill. Not necessary. You want to put a light coating on? That's fine. But, I mean, come on. That's just ridiculous. Now, let me get a little gook cleaned off of here. I mean, I shouldn't have chunks of it sitting on a rag when I just wipe it off. 
Now with the new shims in place, you can see I got a little bit of lube on there. And now when you put pads in, see that? The pads are moving on their own. They should have some movement. You shouldn't have to hammer the darn pads in. If you do, you have an issue, you have a clearance issue. So they should be able to free move. If they don't, you may have to clearance a pad. I've had to do that in the past. You may have rust build up on the caliper bridge, caliper bracket, whatever. So, but now everything's ready to go back together. I cleaned off all the anti-seize that was all over everything. And whenever you're doing this too, take the pins out. Like, see that? That's nice and lubricated. Just make sure the pins are moving nice and free in there. And that the boots aren't torn or anything like that. If they are, replace them if you can. Um, yeah. So let's just assemble that. This whole video is not about just doing brakes. It was more about doing the brake line and the loss of brakes. So that's why I'm not going to get totally into this. So there it goes. We bled it out and everything is good. There's no leaks, no nothing. And uh, now we have a brake pedal. So yay. So now really all I got to do is put the wheels back on. I did try bleeding it out with the original master cylinder. Would not bleed out. So the other master cylinder must have gotten ruined. You know, and I had a heck of a time getting everything apart up there too. Um, but like I said, this video was, wasn't in regards to replacing pads and rotors or wheel cylinders, which I did the wheel cylinders and back, or changing master cylinder. That's a different video. This one was just about finding a leak and fixing the leak. So that part of it's done. So, but yeah, so that's it. So hopefully you got something out of this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.